when I came out, I saw the at six o'clock in the morning saw that there was a huge avalanche, and everything was covered. That camp was totally uh, you couldn't even see, and uh, that devastated us a lot. Because we were not worried about the tent or anything else, only the oxygen cylinder, about 1920 cylinders, were buried. So nobody could go up. So then the leader had a hard choice to make. He said that, look, it is not possible, and we need to wind up the camp now. But then, you know, kept on digging for two hours, couldn't get anything. Then suddenly my axe hit on a cylinder. Ting! That sound came. That was very... I knew it was a boxing cylinder. So then Pudorji was lined up with me and we were to, we together stepped on the summit. It was around minus 30 degrees at that time. But uh, there's a job to be done when you're on the summit. Certain photographs you have to take from north, south, etc. Because on Everest, if I don't take the pictures, people can say you have they're not done. We had a movie camera, Pilot Bolex. It stopped working 50 feet below the summit. And that again annoyed us. So we had to keep it 50 feet down. Pudorji uh, with me, he said, throw it down in the, in the Chinese side. Let the Chinese have it. We were feeling hungry. So we chocolate. And there was a packet of chocolate. So we all sort of shared with that. I mean, just to put it, it's humility. You know, you, you are very humbled by looking at the entire universe because fortunately that day the weather was to be very bad. So we said, too elevated, we will go. But the weather was beautiful, bright weather. This is the first time we thought the weather gods had gone wrong. So it was, it was beautiful, so we could take beautiful pictures. And uh, suddenly, the, the, the Pudorji brought a lovely cup of coffee for me. I said, hey, where is this from? He said, no, I carried it in my thermos. So this, this, this is a present from me. So little, little we had, whatever was worth with him. Mm -hmm.